Welcome. Welcome back, girl. I'm so happy to have you back to the Energize podcast. We're going to be talking about breath work and we're going to be talking about what feels most alive for you today. And we were just talking about the holidays. I know you and I are both gearing up to spend time with family. And what I wanted to start off with, I think, you know, I've had you on the show a couple of times or actually maybe one time, and we've talked deeply about breath work. But one of the things I think um, we haven't really dove into was kind of the, the why behind it for you. Like, mm. what was that, that transformation for you that, that set you on a course? Cause this is not your first business. This is mm. not your first rodeo, mm -hmm. but this is something that you have felt the most connected into. Mm. And so mm. I just love for you to share a lot of that. I know so many of us are in our hustle. We're in that hustle energy. Mm. We're burning out all over the place. And I know that that was potentially the case for you too, until you pivoted into this. Yeah. I'd love for you to share that story and then we'll get into the nitty gritty. Yeah. Well, first of all, it's such a joy to be in your energy as always. And thank you so much for having me back on the show. It's so perfect. You know, there's something I'll, I'll share a little bit about breathwork and like the why, and then I'll kind of share a little story around like why it excites me so much. But I just love the idea that every single human on the planet has an ability to regulate their nervous system with nothing other than their breath, right? Nothing other than their breath. Like there's nothing on the face of the earth that can bring us to the, the states you know, the, the, the deep states of joy and calm and regulation, and it's all inside of us and our creator, God, universe, whatever, gave us the ability to do that. And so it's fun to remind people of how powerful they are. And breath work saved me at a time where I, it saved me a couple of times, but this, the time that I'm reflecting on right now is I remember I was running my old company called Hungry for Happiness. And I was burnt out. My team was burnt out. I actually just came from a, a, a meeting with someone who I used to work with. And we were like, we we're like, we we're like reflecting on how burnt out we were and how exhausted we, we were and how we were burning the candle at, at both ends. And, you know, I had this mission of desiring to bring this work into the world to help women who struggled with emotional eating and body image issues. But I was lost in the process of doing it. I felt so depleted. I felt so exhausted. I felt so just like almost the feeling of like resentful, like, oh, what's the, what's the point of this? Like, I'm trying to make everyone else happy. And like, I'm not happy. Mm -hmm. And so I remember driving from Sandy, from LA back to San Diego where I live. And I was, I was just like, you know, when I'm in my car by myself, I just like talk to myself or I'll like ask the universe, like, what is my next move? And it just dropped in. It was like, you need to teach the world to breathe. And it's called pause breath work. Like it literally gave me the name of it as well. And so, you know, I, really allowed myself to listen to that. And I made a commitment to myself that if I'm going to build another company, I'm not going to do it like the way I've always done it. I'm not going to do it with a jacked up nervous system where I'm anxious every day. I'm reactive. I'm resentful. I'm going to do it from a place of alignment and regulation and inspiration and, and truly love. If we strip it all down, you know, it's like, I really believe that the businesses that are love filled and have like a, a true heart to them are the ones that thrive and, you know, generate millions of dollars and, and have massive impact and massive transformation in the world. And so to tie that into breathwork, breathwork reminds me on a daily basis where I'm coming from energetically. And if I'm, I'm, if I'm in an anxious reactive state, I know that anything that I create from that place, people are gonna feel that, right? Energy is everything. And so there's the 3D physical world that we can all see, but then there's the energetic world that we can't see, but is so palpable and speaks louder than the 3D world. And so if we're not paying attention to the conversation underneath the conversation, we're gonna run our businesses on you know depletion and burnout, and we're gonna be frustrated and overwhelmed and stressed out and we're going to be on the verge of a breakdown, you know, like a lot of people are in business. And so my, my intention is to bring this work to as many people as possible, remind them that they are their own drug, remind them that they have the capacity for huge transformation within themselves, but then also sharing that transformation with others. Mm. Oh, so good. And, and I, I see that. I mean, we're, um, we're actually 
practically next door neighbors <laughs> down the street from one another. And it's the most fun and most beautiful thing to just run into you walking down the street towards the, usually towards the ocean is usually what we're going and doing. But, um, you know, I see that in you, I see the energy in you and, and I see you facilitating in such a big level and really helping people to tap into that. And I want to speak into what you just, you kind of just finished off with, um, which is that, um, this gets to be like, we get to, you know, we get to use our own, you know, breath to kind of act as you are the drug, like act as the drug to help regulate the nervous system. Can you, can you talk a little bit about what that means that you are the drug, um, when it comes to regulating one of the most important systems of the body? Yeah. So for every point of suffering that we have in our, in our body, we are have the remedy. We have the antidote energetically within us, right? So it's like, if we take this like rupture, this wound in our body, maybe it's like, let's work with like a uh, lack of self-worth, right? The, the, the wound of worthiness, the worthiness wound, which is very familiar for, for, for many people. Well, the remedy to the worthiness wound is not overworking, overdoing, making loads of money, fulfilling it in a relationship or anything like that the remedy to the worthiness wound is us actually coming home to ourselves and loving ourselves and having that connection with ourselves and so it's actually quite simple but we overcomplicate it because we assume it's outside of ourselves well if i feel this way then maybe i need more instagram followers i need you know to double my business i need to date that woman of my dreams or that man of my dreams i need to you know insert whatever thing you think is going to satiate that wound but really what's going to satiate and meet that need and heal that worthiness wound is is you is is us right and that i find so exciting because the amount of regulation that we can invite into our lives when we realize that we are our own drug and we are the remedy is so infinite and it's so exciting to mm-hmm. teach people that and to see how quickly those experiences can can occur. I was teaching breath work a couple of weeks ago and I did like a 90 minute session and you know, you and Ooh, I did breath you work go, together. Go deep, girl. <laughs> oh yeah, we did it. We did it. And you know, this woman came up to me at the end and she was like, I gotta tell you something. And I was like, what? And she goes, I've done 20 years of therapy and I had no idea what self-love feels like until this moment, until this breathwork session. And, you know, I've heard that multiple times and that was my experience as well. I remember the first time I did breathwork was 14 years ago, maybe 15 years ago now in Bali. And I was like, wait a second, why do we not know that we can do this? Like, why is this not, why are people not shouting from the rooftops that every human ever has the ability to feel infinite through breathwork and we're just missing the point? And so it feels like a fun mission. Oh, it's the most amazing mission. So I want to get into kind of a little bit of the, some like, I know not not everyone who's listened to this, this interview today has ever, has has done it. Um, And so I would love for you to speak into, because I think some people may think it is hard or maybe it is going to be really emotional. Um, And so I'd like maybe that you would have to effort through it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm just going to throw Alex under the bus. It is not, it is not his favorite. I love it, but it's not his favorite thing. Cause he does yeah. feel like it kind of, it, he's got a, it, it probably is bringing things up for him that he's not ready for, but I just yeah. curious, yeah. <laughs> you know, when, when people, when, when people are embarking or thinking about doing it, um, you know, d- does it have to be a long journey? You know, can it yeah. be a much smaller one? Can you go into some of the nuances for people who are just like, what is this exactly? Yeah, definitely. So my first ever breathwork session was in Bali and it was three hours long and it was super intense. It's the kind of breathwork that's like, <sighs> Like you're so, going hard. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. And that was my first introdu- introduction to breath work was like this super intense, like cathartic, bawling my eyes out, screaming out. And I, you know, I'm grateful that happened because I don't know if I would be here doing this if it didn't happen because that was so impactful, but it also was so unnecessary. <laughs> You're like, that was intense. Yeah. I went through I, many journeys. <laughs> yeah. And so at Pause Breathwork, we really introduce a trauma-informed approach, meaning we we practice this concept called titration. And titration is 
slowly opening the body up to more energy because that's what you're doing is you're adding more oxygen, you're adding more energy and really doing it in a trauma-informed way, which is just keep checking in with your body. Do I feel safe? Do I feel good? And if so, then keep going. And if not, take a take, take a pause, no pun intended, take a break and then keep doing it. So I, I tell people all the time, if you want to start doing breath work, start doing it for three minutes a day with a top hold. So like, like nice and slow, depth over speed, like, and then after that, take a deep breath in through the nose, hold at the top and let go. And if you just do that for three minutes a day, every single day, you are going to notice a massive shift in how you show up for yourself, how you look at the world, how you interact with people, because you'll know, oh, wait a second, when I come back to my breath, I feel calmer, I feel less stressed. I don't get caught up in those details of worrying about, you know, the color of a button on a landing page or whatever, like, I, like whatever you obsess over, over, it doesn't actually matter. And what matters is my, <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> Only because so much debate has happened in my business around the color of that freaking button, girl. <laughs> oh my goodness. Or it's the kitchen getting cleaned or it's the presents yes. getting wrapped a certain way or whatever yes. it is. Totally. Oh my gosh, the button. That's Ooh, so funny. I'm so, so glad I used that example. That was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but whatever your, your thing yeah. is, right? Like, like my, my thing is like, I hate when my car's a mess. And like when my Ooh, car's a mess, girl, I, I hate when irritated. anything's a mess. Ooh. Yeah, same. Like mm. I hate clutter. I hate dirt. I'm like, God. But then I'm like, Sam, are you going to ruin your day and ruin Eric's day? Because like you are a clean freak. No, I'm not going to. I'm going to take a breath and I'm going to be like, hey, you know what? In the grand scheme of things, it actually doesn't matter. And I'm going to come back to my breath and I'm going to focus on what does matter, which is love, which is connection, which is creativity, which is helping people, which is being my best self, being my healthiest self, being my most energized self. And let, I'm going to let go of the rest. You know, it's like, I, I think there's something so beautiful about knowing that we are in control of our energy. And I love that you, you know, this obviously this whole podcast is about, right? It's like, energy is everything. It's everything. And when we truly know the levers to pull in order to optimize, energize, and ener energize and amplify our energy, there we go, then we become empowered. You know, like yesterday, I don't know what happened yesterday, but the universe just decided to take a giant crap on me yesterday. And like everything, like there were so many things that that happened, you know, like like it became comical by the end of the day. I'm like, you cannot make this up. You're like, like is this happening for me? I Come on. know, I know. And I'm like Googling it. They're like, there's a solar flare and a met mercury retrograde. And I'm like, I don't know what's happening, but it's not fun. It's flaring for me. <laughs> yes, yes, exactly. Like this is so comical and so sad. Funny. So anyways, it was like one of those days where I'm like, I'm like, okay, well, what I can control is my energy towards all of these things. I can control my energy towards that client, that email, that letter, that misfire I like that's what I'm in control of and rather than pushing to make it right how can I just make my energy right and mm -hmm. when I make my energy right somehow some way everything works out and it's wild because today was a completely different day if you were to catch me yesterday girl I don't know if we could have done this you were like <laughs> we need to reschedule girl and you can always do that just know with me you're like I need to reschedule today is not the day I feel that but I love what you're speaking into right now, Samantha, which is every, we're all in it. We're all in the stuff. The stuff mm. is happening. Yeah. It's, it's in, you know, and like you said, I think one of the things that you inspire me, because I, I see it playing out every time we're connected, every time we're walking together, it is that reframe mm. of how I, how I leverage my energy, how I can shift my energy to see this differently, to show mm. up in creativity, to show up in love, to show up in, you know, this really is working out for me. Like, I don't know exactly what's going on, why it's going on, but I get to shift how I see this yeah. and, um, and having a tool and anchor like breath to, cause it's one thing to, to, to be in the mental thought of that. I mean, I'm always, I'm always in them. It doesn't mean it's playing out like that for me on an emotional level, 
<laughs> but having breath to anchor to, mm. I think it's so profound. Yeah, absolutely. Those somatic practices where, you know, for those of you guys who that's a new word for you, somatic, the root word is soma, which means body in Greek. And so breath work is a somatic practice, meaning we're we're going past the mind and we're getting into the deeper levels of the emotion, which is why sometimes people are like, oh, breath work, I don't want to cry or I don't want to feel things. It's like, I get it. I, I, I was there as well. Like I was super numbed out. I was super anxious. I had disordered eating and body image issues and I didn't want to feel my emotions. But again, I learned titration and slowly feeling over time then my body just got so used to feeling but you know being able to like really use our breath to clear out the energy again everything's energy the energy in our body that's not serving us you know that micro trauma of your parents walking out of your room when you were three years old and you thinking that they were never going to come back on some level that is still living in our bodies if we don't process it and let it go right? The breakup when you were 16, the grief you're holding from when your grandpa died, the pain you're feeling of a breakup, like this energy is living in us. And I, I remember that first breathwork session that I did that I was sharing that was three hours. That was about four years after I had a pretty bad breakup. And in that session, I was just crying and crying and crying and all of this grief and all of this sadness was just leaving my body. And it wasn't sad in the sense of like, oh my God, I miss him. It was sad in the sense of, wow, this energy has been stuck in my body for so long and I'm finally just giving myself the permission to let it go. And the body holds so much of everything. And so when we give it a, you know, breathwork is like an emotional shower. It's like, let's cleanse it out. Let's clear it out. A lot of people are, I'm assuming a lot of Everybody. your listeners are highly sensitive, you know, we're like take on a lot of energy. And so giving ourselves that emotional makeover every single day is so powerful. When, as you mentioned, we all, we're all dealing with some type of trauma, small traumas, traumas we don't remember that mm -hmm. are just being held on into our body. And one of the reasons why I was so connected and attracted to breath work wasn't just the, you know, trying to re-regulate my nervous system or taking a moment to recalibrate. Cause I always think that's important, but I know a lot of my recalibration is from lingering traumas from the past. Yeah. Like if I'm looking at the world and viewing the world in a certain way, it's cause of what, what happened before that I may not even know how to tap into anymore, you know? And so, especially as you know, my big why as a mama was just like, how do I keep you know, clearing out space and energy, things that I don't know are stuck. Also my health. Um, so breathwork has been something that has been so profound for me in just, just clearing energy, giving myself spaciousness, you know, not reacting to things that, you know, five years ago, I would have 100% just flew off the handle, not even a second thought to it. Um, and that to me is so profound, um, to be able to have that space and to be able to know that my body is, like you said, has the antidote energetically to heal. Yeah. I think that is so profound. And it doesn't, like you said, I just love the trauma informed way of doing it. It doesn't have to be more than three minutes. It doesn't yeah. have to be more than five minutes. Yeah. If you want the 90 minute, three hour merry-go-round journey, go get it. But like it, it, it doesn't have to be totally. If that's totally. not what you're ready for. Yeah. I, I tell my clients all the time that intensity doesn't equal transformation. And I, I think that nuance is relevant in a lot of areas, but particularly with breathwork. Whenever I teach men breathwork, especially like I've taught a lot of like veterans and like military and like I've, for some reason, I don't know, they, they want a Southern California chick to you know come out and talk about energy they're all like what but like they start breathing and like they're just going so intense and i'm like guys you did like this this is not what we're doing here it's you don't have to go that intense in fact some of the most gentle journeys are the ones where i have the most beautiful profound insights and are truly life-changing it doesn't have to be so intense there are times where breathwork is intense and that's beautiful too but it doesn't have to be that and yeah so for people listening like choose your own adventure choose your own adventure 
Another question I have around kind of the, maybe the longer sessions or where, you know, cause I know you just never know what's going to come up, you know, no matter what do you recommend? I mean, I obviously do breath work on my own a lot, but I also do it facilitated. Mm -hmm. um, do you recommend facilitation if someone's really going through something that there may be a, a need for processing, or do you find a lot of the processing is happening in the process? Yeah, that's a great question. In my experience, working with a facilitator takes you deeper. I've never had a self session that's been as deep as the ones I have with facilitators. And I highly recommend for anyone who's never had a breathwork session done by a facilitator, definitely do it. There's a different, there's a different energy there. I think when you're held in a container where there's safety and there's attunement and the sole purpose of someone being there with you is for your growth and evolution, there's a certain level of depth and permissioning that you can go into as the breather to really open up and metabolize a lot of that energy that maybe you wouldn't feel the safety to do on your own. And not just that, there's a, another grounded nervous system there that is actually nourishing you as you are breathing and unfolding and letting go. So I highly recommend one-on-one -on -one breathwork sessions. Groups are beautiful as well, but there's something there there is something so special about a one-to-one -one breathwork session. Mm. No, I've been I agree with you. Facilitated it always has always been the bigger breakthrough, the bigger, you know, releases. And it's for me, it's always been small groups. I actually haven't ever done well, I've even I've I've maybe had you I you and maybe see me and like me and Jen. So there's, yeah, 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 yeah. So it's been like three of us. You know, I've been I've been so blessed to be facilitated by you a couple of times. Um, but I just wanted to dive in to, to kind of answer that question. Cause I know I've gotten that a lot. People ask me, should I do this facilitated? Like, what do you recommend? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and I feel like we've really kind of, you know, laid the foundation, but I would love for you to speak into, um, why breath work can be so powerful, especially for people who meditation is just not, it just ain't the thing. It just isn't, it's just not cutting it. Mm -mm. Well, so in my early 20s, I struggled with an eating disorder and body image issues. And so, and, and I have a healthy amount of ADHD. So sitting down, closing my eyes and feeling my emotions and being in my body for someone who is in that state was excruciatingly hard. I can remember, you know, I would go to therapy and they'd like tell me, okay, well, your homework for this week is to meditate for 20 minutes every single day. And I'm like, I would rather climb Mount Everest. Like I hate it so much. And meditation was so irritating and it was so hard for me to actually be with my experience because I just wanted to run away with it, run away from it. So I got distracted and I got, I avoided it and I just didn't like it. I couldn't get the benefits from it. So there's many people who resonate with that. I'm sure as far as, you know, a busy mind or not wanting to feel your emotions or being, you know, having body image issues. The med meditation is, is hard if, if you don't want to be in your body because it requires mm -hmm. you to be in your body. The reason why I loved, the reason why breathwork was a game changer for me is because you don't have to think about not thinking, which is typically the path of meditation, right? It's, it's like the notice what you're noticing, think about like, think about not thinking type of thing. Just wait for the thoughts to leave. Well, that's challenging for a lot of people. And so I always say breathwork is for you if you can't meditate because breathwork allows us to use the inhale and the exhale. And what the inhale and the exhale is doing is it's actually quieting down the part of our brain that is responsible for our survival strategies. Well, when our survival strategies aren't so hypervigilant, trying to control the situation, and they're a little bit more in the background, then, then the impact of that is deeper embodiment. And when we're deeper in our body, then we have a deeper connection to our body and it just begins to, to flow. And so I love meditation today, but I'll never meditate before I do breath work because my meditations are just not as deep if I don't do breath work first. So what I generally do is I'll do 20 minutes of breath work and then I'll do 20 minutes of meditation. And that kind of pairing together is like so powerful for me. Now, again, depending on your schedule and your bandwidth and what you got going on. Maybe you start with three minutes of breath work and three minutes of sitting in silence. Maybe it's one minute and one minute. It doesn't matter. Just steal time for yourself to work on feeling amazing and pouring back into your cup. Because as much as society wants us to be everything, we can't be everything to everyone all the time. And it's so important that we take those moments for ourselves and pour back in our cup so we can really be the confident, aligned, you know, humans that we know we are.
Mm. I love the permission for the shorter ones, but also, you know, the like 20 minutes. And if you love meditation, getting to pair them up, but like get in where you fit in, like whatever works for yeah. you. One of the things that you spoke into, even in your own journey was, um, a little bit of like just having a little bit of anxiety or anxiousness. And obviously we, there's the spectrum of, of anxiety that many of us are dealing with. Um, and I would love to have you speak. I know you spoke to it a little bit already about kind of just, you know, again, putting, pu forcing or allowing the, the, um, sympathetic nervous system to kind of take a back seat yeah. while, while you really get into the body and kind of, kind of bypass that mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. Um, but talk to me about how we can use it. I feel like, I mean, there's so much anxiety that people are dealing with right now today more than ever. And it, it's kind of ruling a lot of, you know, their actions or choices, mm -hmm. you know, how can we use this modality to, to kind of create more of a calm, calm system? Yeah, this is a great question. So first of all, it's knowing your system, right? Everyone's body is so different. And the way that we interact with stress is so different. So for me, I go more anxious when I'm triggered. So when I'm in my survival strategy, everything's just quicker. <laughs> like everything's fast. Everything, and, and I go into this anxious state. Now for my dear friend who I was just with, her system goes more into like a collapsed, depressed state. And so depending on how you metabolize stress and what your survival strategy is, we can kind of choose a breathwork pattern that would suit you. And so the anxious types, what's really good for those types is the slower, deeper breath work where we're actually using sound on the exhale. So uh, and the sounding helps regulate the nervous system and take us from that sympathetic fight or flight into a more parasympathetic rest and di digest. Now for someone who is in a collapsed state, and the, what I mean by that is the energy is kind of folding in on itself and kind of rooting down. And it's like that heaviness, that like, ugh, that lethargic, that depressed feeling. Using a breathwork pattern like the triactive breath, which is <sighs> that is actually quite good for that system because it's adding more energy into the system, which can bring us back into a place of neutrality of homeostasis. Now, if someone is super anxious and they start to use that energizing breathwork technique, it's going to push them deeper into the sympathetic and it's not going to be good. So know yourself, know thyself, right? And we're also different every single day. And so maybe you're listening and you're like, I actually do both. Okay, cool. Well, when you're anxious, go for a more grounding one. When you're feeling depressed, go for a more energizing one. And on our pause breathwork app, depending on what track people use, there's different breath patterns for different outcomes. So if people do want to feel energized, there's breath patterns to feel energy. If people do want more of like a grounding, calming one, there's breath patterns for that as well. Hmm. Yeah. I'm you. I'm just like you. I just go straight into overdrive. We're, we're cut from the same cloth, sister. We definitely <laughs> are. And I was curious, even with the vocal sound, is that helping with vagal tone as well? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was, yeah. Yeah. It's just yeah. kind of recentering that vagal tone. That is so powerful. And yes, this, she mentioned, she does have an app. I love the app. It's amazing. And you get to pick yeah. your own adventure. You get to pick your own time. It mm -hmm. is in a way it's not like, obviously there's one, something to be said, as we talked about, about like facilitation in person, but yeah. it is facilitated. And so if you're thinking to yourself, like, do I got to just start breathing by myself? No, you do not. Like you, yeah. you can go and get the app. It's going to be in the link. And then the other thing that I want to just mention about Samantha is that she facilitates breathwork facilitators. And mm -hmm. so you bring breathwork experts into the world. And yeah. so if there's anyone listening as well, um, who was like, man, I would love, gosh, this is touching this. Like, this is connecting so deep with me. Like, I want to know how to do this. I definitely want you to go check out the site as well. Cause Samantha is literally like her company is the leading breathwork company in the world where mm -hmm. she is teaching, um, you know, healers to actually facilitate around the world. I just mm -hmm. wanted to mention that because you're so amazing. And I just had to just drop that uh, real quick. You're so sweet. You're so sweet. Yeah. It, it, thank you for sharing that. I had this vision vision that came in like as soon as I decided to as soon as I switched from hungry for happiness to pause breathwork I had this vision come in and the vision was this 
world. It was like the globe. And on the globe, there was all of these like little tiny lights, like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. And my intuition was like, every single one of those lights is an indication of one of the trained breathwork facilitators that you are going to train. This is before I did anything. This was before, I was like, this is a lot. Okay. And <laughs> saddle up and, girl. <laughs> and so I was like, okay. And they're like, and this is how breathwork is going to change the world is not through your effort and force, but you are going to pour into these leaders, into these facilitators, and then they are going to take breath work and share it with their businesses, their clients, their communities and things like that. And so it's so cool because now we have thousands of breathwork facilitators all over the world doing this work in the world. You know, I get tagged on Instagram every single day of breathwork events all around the world that is happening. And it's just so fun. It's such a fun mission. And they're literally your little life. lights, your little yeah. light facilitators are all over the world doing it. It's just so incredible. You know, when I learned this practice, I was like, oh, this is the thing. I, I, I loved meditation. I, you know, I, I loved, you know, connecting with my body, doing vision work, but like the breath work, the physicality of it, like it felt so good. I, I think it really, what my, my little body trauma, trauma body needed was, was some more somatic work and sometimes movement just wasn't always doing it. Yeah. And so yeah. this for me was just like, it unlocked something so powerful and profound and I'm just so grateful to have one of the, the best facilitators as a, as a dear friend, um, you know, doing, just doing this work at such an epic level, just such an epic level. Um, and the last thing I wanted to just um, have you ask, or I wanted to ask you is, cause I know some people are struggling, especially with, you were talking about that low vagal tone where people yeah. disassociate and disconnect yeah. and often it lends to addiction. And yeah. so that, that big question um, is, you know, how I know breath work has been so profound for people dealing with addiction is it a lot because we're doing that that kind of working on the vagal tone or the somatic work kind of mm -hmm. connect the dots for me there as well yeah, definitely. I love how you're speaking to to vagal tone. That's definitely a conversation that gets to happen more because it is so imperative and it's such a such an indicator of our overall mental health and 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 our you know connection to our body and and just our operating system, right? And so the vagus nerve stimulating the vagus nerve through breath work helps us satiate a lot of our emotional needs and helps us truly create that deep regulation that we've been talking about when it comes to addiction and an addiction is is created when three or more of our human needs are met right and so when three or more of our human needs are met in a, in a negative way it creates an addiction well the beautiful thing about breath work is breath work meets our needs but in a positive way, right? It, it meets our need for love. We feel an abundance of love. It meets our need for, for connection to ourself, to each other, to the world. Like the amount of times that I've, you know, taught a breathwork class and then people have come up and they're, they're like, I just forgave my dad for all of the years, da, 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 da. Like I didn't know that I was holding on to this, right? So it really helps restore our, our connection. It, it gives us, it gives us, uh, like, uh, significance in the way of like realizing that, that we are significant and we are not just on this earth for no reason. We're on this earth to share our spiritual gifts and to be an embodiment of our soul. And there's, there's such a reason why we're here and it's so important for each of us. And so when we can, we, we've actually worked a lot with people with addiction and it's just about how do we use the breath to meet your needs in a positive way? right? Mm -hmm. Addiction work isn't about like, okay, stop doing that thing. It's right, like, okay, no, well, what, yeah. what, what was the needs that got you addicted? What was the unhealthy lifestyle? And what, what was there before the addiction, before the substance? And now how can we just add in these things so that the addiction becomes less relevant? And so it is very powerful for people who struggle with, with addiction. Mm. I feel like we touched all the big ones, anxiety, <laughs> yes. addiction, yes. deregulated stress system, mm -hmm. you know, overworking hustle cu culture. Mm -hmm. And that's what I really wanted to come on and connect with you about was that a lot of these things that we are in the lived experience, like right now dealing mm -hmm. with, whether yeah. it's ourselves or family members and, you know, not have, you know, not knowing what kind of modality or what we can connect into. 
to me, the power of, and the simplicity of breath work is just mind blowing and that it's, it's worth trying. It's worth mm -hmm. just giving it a go. It's worth just going and grabbing the app. And so mm -hmm. can you tell us where, where we can get yes. all the things to connect in to you and to go deeper down this beautiful journey? Definitely. So if you search pause breath work in the app store, um, there's a free 14 day trial. So you can get on there, start breathing, start trying out the, the, um, the sessions are just, it's, it's the way it's designed is cool. Cause there's all different times. So wh how, however much time you have, again, we talked about three minutes. So there's hundreds of tracks that are three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, um, 25 minutes, 45 minutes. So depending on where you're at in your breathwork journey, you can choose the time. And then once you choose the time, say you're like, okay, I've got five minutes to do this. Then you can look to see, okay, what is the outcome that I want? Again, there's breathwork to energize you. There's breathwork to ground you, to clear your mind, to open your heart, to feel peaceful, to feel more abundant. So just choosing again, choosing your own own adventure there so that's pause breath work um it's a little orange symbol and then for those of you who are desiring to become breath work facilitators everything is at pausebreathwork.com there you can um, apply to for our breath work training which is a six-month training that we run and it is so much fun and not only will you become a masterful breathwork facilitator but it also is this beautiful personal development journey that you get to go on as well and then I hang out on Instagram, so you can come <laughs> say hi over there. And on your podcast. Oh, and on my podcast. Can't be contained. Thank you for that. <laughs> You're so welcome. <laughs> I love that name. I love Can't Be Contained so much. I've listened to so many of the episodes, almost all of them. Um, I just love it. And so I just wanted to plug that as well because it's been a favorite show of mine. And I've mentioned it before on Insta and on my show before. So I'm just so happy okay. to get to plug it again. <laughs> Oh, it's so fun. And your episode's coming out soon too. Yay. That was so great. <laughs> Thank you so much, love, for coming on and sharing your brilliance and the beautiful work you're doing in the world. I'm just so grateful that you are, you listened to that message. You listened to that download and you have been following that vision. Mm. Mm. Thank you. I appreciate that. And it's been such a pleasure being here with you. Mm -hmm. I right, see you soon. Yeah.